Hi everybody, you have a question on price discrimination and you're looking at drawing some diagrams. We have to draw a couple of diagrams here. Uh, one diagram to show the impact of first degree price discrimination and one other diagram which is made up of two diagrams to show third degree price discrimination. Now, I'm not going to draw a diagram for second degree, there are lots of different ideas on second degree and I don't think you'll ever be asked to draw a diagram for second degree price discrimination. So let's just focus on first and third. This diagram is for first degree. What do you draw? Well, just simply, price and quantity on the axis like this. Draw a demand curve. Make sure your demand curve starts from the y-axis. That's going to be important because we're going to show a consumer surface. So demand curve, call it D1. Pick a price, call it P1. And the quantity of Q1. And what you're trying to say is that normally in a market, um, P1 will be charged and there'll be some consumer surface. So shading this consumer surface. But the difference now is that in first degree price discrimination, all of that consumer surface will be turned into monopoly profit. So what you need to do is label that and say in first degree price discrimination, all consumer surface is turned into monopoly profit. So a long label, but an important label. You're kind of putting some analysis in your diagram here. But that's what you've got to say. So all this consumer surplus is turned into monopoly profit by each individual being charged exactly the amount that they are willing and able to pay for a good or service. Alright, so that's first degree. Let's now look at third degree price discrimination and the diagram behind. Okay then, so for third degree price discrimination, what are we trying to show? Well, we're trying to show that in different markets, in different segments of markets, there can be different prices. Specifically, when there is inelastic demand and when there is elastic demand. Okay, so think peak and off-peak for like rail travel, for example. And what we're trying to show is this different prices idea. So obviously when there is inelastic demand, higher prices, elastic demand, lower prices. So make sure you have that in your mind so you know what the end outcome of the diagram is supposed to be. Right, your textbook might say you need to draw three diagrams here. I'd say you just need to draw two side by side and it tells the story perfectly. So why complicate things when things can be simple, right? So on the axis, we need to show price, costs, and revenue on both. Okay, so price, cost, revenue. And on the x-axis, it's going to be quantity on both. Okay, next thing to do is to draw your revenue curves. Now, they are your demand curves, right? So you've got to draw them inelastic here and elastic here. So let's do that. AR, which equals demand. MR, twice as steep. And then more elastic. So AR equals demand. MR Quite so steep. Remember the assumption here is that marginal cost is horizontal. If you don't understand any of this theory, go and watch my previous video on price discrimination. So let's draw our marginal revenue curve and label it as such. Oh, sorry, marginal cost curve and label it as such. Next, we want to do is to show um, profit maximization in both markets. So only monopolists can do this. So let's get to profit maximization where MC is equal to MR. That takes us to Q1 in the peak market, in the inelastic demand market, which gives us a price of P1. Do the same in the off-peak market, where M C equals MR is there. Let's call that Q2. Read the price of the AR curve and call that P2. And you made the point. You said, look, because of varying elasticities of demand, different market segments, they have a higher price in the peak market, a lower price in the off-peak market. And that's your point made, absolutely made and uh, nicely argued, different prices. We've hit number six. So let's go through our checklist. Have we labeled our axis? Yes, we have. Detail. Have we labeled our curves? Yes, we have. Have we got the equilibria right? We have. The profit maximizing equilibria in both markets have been labeled. Lovely, lovely. We did the first degree diagram, so that one was done. Third degree diagram has been done as well. Different prices in third degree has been shown too. Lovely, in which case we're done. These are the diagrams you need for price discrimination. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all in the next video.